Fly ball in the left. That should do it. Astros win the pennant. For our group, to be honest with you, we, we finished short. It's World Series or bust. This One thing that I've realized with Red Sox Nation, you gotta show it to me before I can believe it. The Red Sox win the ball game. The ultimate walk off for two ball Pulsey. The Red Sox win. Oh, they are resilient. We started to believe. And I think that was the biggest thing. We believed how good we were. We, we added some pieces the last few years. Uh, Rich Hill, James Paxson, uh, Michael Waka. How good does it feel to be back? It feels good. It's almost go time. Weather's good, the vibe is good. Um, you know, it feels like spring training, but behind the scenes, there's so many different things happening. We are thrilled to welcome <laughs> Trevor and his wife, Mally, uh, to the Red Sox family. A lot of the guys have reached out to me, Kike, Bogey, Chris Sale, Uvalde, all these guys. And they've already made me feel so much at home. We all know what he can do offensively, but defensively he's just as good. Kind of like having that chip on our shoulder and, and proving everybody wrong. We didn't get the job done. We didn't accomplish our goal last year. There's no off days for us. We'll look up in September, see where we at, and then we push hard in September and try to make it to the playoffs. Last year, for a lot of people outside the organization, we either got lucky or overperformed, whatever you want to call it, right? Coming into the season, a lot of people didn't think that, that we were going to put together a quality campaign. Really had no chance at, at, frankly, making the playoffs or even contending in the division. And that had nothing to do with our talent. We knew that we were a talented team. We just knew it was going to be a, a bumpy and, and a rocky road to get there. It was going to be a tough an uphill battle. I mean, the 21 Red Sox outperformed expectations. 92 wins, I think a lot of people had them around the 80 range. One thing that I've realized with Red Sox Nation, with a lot of them, and they're realists, is you gotta show it to me before I can believe it. First bit swinging, the Red Sox win the ball game. Swing a high fly ball, this game is over. The ultimate walk off for two goal Pulsey. The Red Sox win. We started to believe, and I think that was the biggest thing. We believed how good we were. Here it comes. Breaking oh! ball struck him out, and the Red Sox have won the top wild card position. We win the wild card. Uh, we beat New York. We beat Tampa, and then we were ahead in the ALCS, two to one to Houston, and then um, they ended up playing in the World Series. For our group. To be honest with you, we, we finished short. You know, it's, it's World Series or bust. They make it all the way to the postseason. They win the wild card game. ALCS was insane. Obviously, we want them to take the next step, but that was enormous considering when in spring training in 21, no one thought they had a chance to do that. No one even had us beating the wild card game. No one had us beating the Rays. And then obviously, when we got to Houston, no one thought we were going to win there. But we gave them a good fight. We were up in the series, but I mean, it's baseball, and, and, and they got hot at the right moment. You know, being here for the first time with the Red Sox, uh, you know, it was pretty special because it was my first time in the playoffs that I could actually go out there and, and do something, help the team win every every night. Hernandez, this one to center field. It is put in by Meadows. Here comes Santana. The Red Sox are the championship series. I just got in that zone, man, and I basically, I was walking unconscious for couple of weeks and it just felt like I was you know I was having like daydreams and all that and I was like I just don't want to wake up from this till you know till we win the World Series. Kike became Babe Ruth. <laughs> the kind of thing that going into each night you just assumed he was going deep. How about another? Unreal. I'll remember that that postseason for the rest of my life. You know this year uh, it's World Series or bust for me. From my end it was a very satisfying um, season. I usually don't show emotion and last year show a little bit more than I, I really wanted to. If you put everything in perspective, where we started and where we finished, it was an outstanding season for the Boston Red Sox and obviously for the city.
the atmosphere at Fenway Park in 2021 for a team that was only getting to the ALCS, and you say only because we're used to winning titles here, was just at that level, if not better, than teams that won the World Series in 07 and 13 and 18. And we got to keep that rolling. That's got to be back again this year, and I think I feel like fans are going to do that. For the guys to play in front of fans, I bet that was amazing. And I felt it too, you know, I had to leave it early on. We went from what, like 12% to 25% to, to 100%. The home field advantage that we get from other teams coming in, our fans making it incredibly difficult for them to play there. Um, on that side of the baseball, and then obviously on our side of the baseball, the energy, the cheering, the, the noise, just, just the extra vibe that the stadium has with all the fans there. I've played on the visiting side, and now I've been able to play on the home side, and Fenway has always been one of those stadiums that it's just, there's a different, there's a different buzz to it, especially when the crowd gets going. I mean, hearing boo sometimes isn't bad. You know, it means that the fans care and they want you to play better and they let you know. Uh, but for the most part, they're, they're always cheering you on. Uh, they're always excited for what you have next, uh, of what you can be able to help the team and how you, and what type of way you can be able to help the team. And, and I mean, Red Sox fans are always so passionate and whenever you win, it's just, it's just a thousand times better. Fanway was different. I, 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 it was great. It was loud. They were intense. Uh, it wasn't as comfortable as it was for the opposition in 19. That's what made it fun. You know, the baseball part is always the baseball part. We're going to be good. We're going to work. But to see everybody else in the city embrace what uh, this team, uh, that, that made it special. And I think you saw a direct correlation from our record at home without fans to when we got fans. The team thrives off of that energy that the fans bring. We got the best uh, fans in the business. We got the best fans in the, in the, in the game. Uh, I know they're used to winning, but we're hungry for more. And just like our team, you know, we expect them to show up every day, keep getting better, get loud, and have a great season. got some guys that uh, they, they got some bling right uh, and, and they play for a team that won 108 and 119 in the season you know JD, Xander, Rafi, uh, Christian right. It's kind of like I, I equate it to like the high school team where you can tell which guys are the seniors you can tell which guys have been around which guys have been here and done that Xander Bogarts, Rafael Devers, JD Martinez they all walk around like they know what they're doing because they do, and they're ready to try to run it back from 2018. All of us, uh, we kind of know what to expect from each other, off the field and also on the field. You know, uh, numbers are numbers, but I mean, all of us kind of know what, what, our, what we're capable of doing, how we can impact the game, and how we can help our team win. Coming from LA, one of the things that stood out right away was, you know, Xander Bogarts and Rafael Devers getting to, to, to watch those guys go about their business and, you know, the, the, their talent and at their age and and uh, it's crazy how unbelievably underrated these two guys are. They have the ingredients, they have the leadership and the understanding of what it takes to get to the ultimate prize and they can tell some of the younger guys, hey, here's what you have to do if you want to win it all. 2-1 to Kike, hit a bunch out to left. And that one's gone! Oh man! We, we added some pieces the last few years that has made it better, you know, Enrique, what he brought to the equation last year. Coming over to the Red Sox, you know, after spending six years in L.A., um, I honestly didn't know what to expect. It was a solid team, a team that could compete, and at the same time they didn't have a set second baseman or set center fielder, and that, uh, that opened two spots for me to, to allow me to be in that lineup on a daily basis. And, you know, a bunch of new teammates, new coaching staff, new league. So I was a new guy, but I felt old pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was really comfortable right away, and it allowed me to be myself. In 2021, Kike acted like he was one of these Red Sox veterans. He blended in perfectly. He was that personality guy, maybe even a little less of the personality that you saw with the fan base that you would have expected, because all of a sudden, he's not a second baseman anymore. He now has to be a center fielder, and he has to be a really good one. You're playing center field at Fenway. Oh, he made the catch! A sensational play! Being with the Dodgers for six years, you learn that there's some, like there's about a handful of teams that it's a it's a it's a true honor to to wear those those uniforms with all the history that comes with those teams and to be able to to, to get my first 
everyday role with an organization like the Boston Red Sox, it was, you know, it meant the world to me, and I didn't take it for granted one one, one time all year. On an 0-1 pitch, Hernandez lifts it into left center field. Here comes Santana. The Red Sox have the championship series. You're riding high. You're coming off of being two wins away from the World Series. Everything felt like, oh, we'll just bring the gang back together. We're going to have the same team and it's going to be all right. And then the lockout starts. And let's be honest, for baseball fans, it was pretty brutal. I have to report that effective at 12.01 a.m. this morning, we instituted a lockout of Major League players. That was tough, you know, not being able to communicate with, with anyone on the team. It was strange. It was just strange dynamic. And not being able to know when it's going to resume or what's going to happen kind of holding on to a thread, you know, you, you really don't know what's going to happen. With a 26 to 12 total, it passed and baseball's back. Major League Baseball's back and we're going to play 162 games. got a deal done a couple days and they're like you got to be in camp in two days. It was nice seeing all those faces again bringing back memories of what we have from last year and hopefully we can create some good memories this time and uh, and have a better better ending. It's great to, to see everybody great to catch up great to see how everybody's excited about this season knowing that you know we, we still have almost the same group of guys. Just happy to have everybody here the guys that were here last year and the new guys that are, are joined us throughout the offseason and the last few days Welcome, you know, welcome to our family. I truly believe that baseball is not black and white. Baseball is actually gray. And I do believe that the gray area in baseball is about opportunity, showing up every day, having structure, have passion, be relentless, be talented, and be consistent. Take care of business, guy. Uh, enjoy that good chemistry that you guys got going on. And when you take that field, say everybody, we are the best. There you go. Thank you. At the end of the day, the work doesn't stop. We just got to keep rolling. So hey, good luck this season. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for David and uh, stay healthy and have fun. So as an organization, we have to slow this down. We understand that there's a adjustment period because of you know the, the few weeks that we have in spring training. I haven't experienced something quite like this. And one of the things that's most interesting is usually this point in spring training is more relaxed. And you walk out here in the field, um, you know, you guys have been here. Um, the weather's good, the vibe is good, um, you know, it feels like spring training. But behind the scenes, there's so many different things happening. It is as busy as any time I've, I've ever experienced in my career. Just like getting into camp and having the timing and, you know, getting back in the rhythm thing. I mean, you could train as much as you want in the off season, but coming out here and standing and running around shagging balls, throwing, you know, just being on your feet on a baseball field, it's, it's hard to replicate that. It's about being smart, it's about putting in the work in the weight room, making sure you're eating good, you're sleeping good, communicating with the coaching staff and the training staff. You know, I've been fortunate, especially when I was younger, I, I had some older guys who really kind of helped me out, figure out a routine and, and kind of work, worked out. Yeah, Matt Barnes, I mean, we're talking about guys that uh, have been there and, and proven themselves. He makes an all-star team last year. Obviously, the second half didn't go how Barnes would have wanted. He knows what it takes to be a dominant reliever, somebody that's going to be buckling knees and really matter for this Red Sox bullpen. So if he gets back to that level, that's your that's your solution right there in the closer role for this team. We put in the work this offseason, um, feeling great, ready to go, and ready to take on another big workload. Hopefully, kind of get rid of that that August August blip, um, and really push forward and, and be there the whole year for the guys. We have a little stretch and throw right now over on T on uh, what's that? Field four, a little PFP. See what that entails. St. Patty's Day, Irish, Boston. It's kind of all synonymous, isn't it? it kind of goes together. I think it's kind of fitting that the day one, game one, right, is is the St. Patty's Day uniforms. It's cool, man. This is harder than it looks. It's my first pitching coach right here. <laughs> first one in pro ball. Out of everything you knew. I got you. Knows. Everything. You go? Like yeah, I'm going super light though. Me too. Even when he throws light, it's hard.
if you don't have those guys that understand they are the energy, they are the clubhouse vibes, I don't think your team's gonna go far. And that's why Christian Arroyo, he's a guy that comes into the, the clubhouse, comes into this team with that energy, that passion, that determination to be in a good mood. That's the difference between a guy like him and insert any other player that would be in that role. Look who it is. How are you doing? doing pretty well. Good to see you. How about you? I'm doing good. Can't complain. We're back out here. We're playing ball. What's up, Yorkie? How you doing? How you doing, buddy? How's good off season? Good? good. Yeah, it's good to see you. you. Good, man. It was good. You good to see you. I'll see you around. Uh, as far as my future going into 21, I didn't really know. I just wanted to make the team coming out of camp. And uh, after we had hired AC, he reached out to some guys. and he reached out to me and just kind of gave me an idea of what to expect coming into camp. And uh, when I came into camp, I talked to, with him, Anaheim, and they told me, hey, there's going to be plenty of opportunity and just play your game and just play baseball. So that's what I ended up doing. was fortunate enough to make the team and then was able to, uh, to, to witness that season. You know, it was special. If anything, we're all just happy that we're back talking about our ridiculous rumors that we make up in our basement. That's what I love. Everybody tells their buddy, oh, what if we send this guy to that team and that guy comes over here? I love that we have that back. You know, in the offseason, you're always looking at like trade rumors and all that stuff to, to find out how the team's gonna get better and who's going where and all that. Because we have a pretty solid ball club, but if we can add a couple more to, to put us at the level of like the other teams that everybody's talking about, then uh, we know that they're willing to, to do what we're trying to do, which is to win the World Series. So we're, we're really looking forward to it. We had 99 days down, right? And uh, there's been a lot of time for everybody around the industry to think and, and plan. Bullpen was gonna be a priority for us, uh, that we do wanna still add position players to the group, an opening for right-handed bat. But that said, you know, in this period, especially with so much going on and so much flying, so many conversations, we wanna be nimble enough to take advantage of, of all opportunities. I'm very excited about the guys that we, we added. Uh, Rich Hill, James Paxson, uh, Michael Waka. Three guys that uh, they're hungry to win a World Series. Veteran guys that been there, done that, and um, they're gonna make us better. At one point during the season, these guys are, are gonna carry our pitching staff. They're gonna make a, a difference in our pitching staff, and that's great. Being able to talk to all the guys from last year, and then even getting to meet the new guys, Waka and Hill and Strom and Diekman, and, uh, you know, even Pax said, I know he's gonna, he, he's down for now, but whenever we get him back, we're excited. But to get to talk to all those guys, it's, it's, it's awesome. You know, adding Rich and walking to the staff, it's gonna be great. You know, you saw what Pavetta was able to do last year. It's gonna be good for us. Rich Hill's here. He's been in the league for about a hundred years and he's ready to dominate here. And he's a local guy, love that. And it helps to know Jackie, uh, the caliber of person he is. It's just moves that make the team better. You know, obviously we know Jackie, man. He, I played with him coming up to the minors. I was there when he got drafted. I played with him a lot in the minors. I played with him a lot in the big leagues. Uh, obviously we know what he can do on the defensive end. But when Jackie's hot, man, he's definitely one of the best players in the game. Uh, hopefully we can get him this year to, to be consistent at that, like he has been towards, towards the last years with us. How good does it feel to be back? It feels good. I'm healthy. I'm glad to be in a familiar place and it's almost go time. And now you don't know. You might have Trevor Story coming here. That infield totally changes. Uh, six years, 140 million with a fourth year opt out for Trevor Story. Big move for Boston. Definitely one of my favorite shortstops. Uh, hopefully we can team up together in the middle of the infield. Uh, he can help me out and we all know what he can do offensively but defensively he's just as good. We are thrilled to welcome <laughs> Trevor and his wife Mally uh, to the Red Sox family. My first impressions of Boston are just obviously Fenway being so historic. Such a special place to play baseball. Um, and I think it's a special place to live. You know, I've only visited, but really enjoyed my time there. And I know the fans are super passionate. The Red Sox run deep. A lot of the guys have reached out to me. Kike, Bogey, Chris Sale, Uvalde, all these guys. And they've, uh, they've already made me feel so much at home. And this is uh, something I'm, I'm really looking forward to. He's an impact player, man. He's someone that can change the game on, on, on so many areas of the game. Coming in here, I know we, we're not a speedy club. We don't steal out of bases, but definitely he's a guy that can do that also. And, and as I said, just an overall 5-2 five, five player. Really, the ultimate decider was, was winning. That's always been at the front of my mind. And 
the Red Sox organization that has a rich tradition of that. And that's what I believe in, and, and that's really what drove me to do it. I mean, the guys in the bullpen, the guys in our starting rotation, the guys in the infield, the guys in the outfield, we got a lot of versatility. We got some guys that can do a bunch of different things, and we've also got our marquee superstar players. It's a good mix, and, and the chemistry amongst everyone in the clubhouse is unparalleled. We know what we're capable of in this clubhouse. Everybody believes in one another. And if anybody outside of the clubhouse wants to say that we're not gonna be that good, or they don't think that we're gonna be that good, we can't compete, I would tell them to look at last year. We got no problem playing with a chip on our shoulder and, and we got no problem proving everybody wrong. So they can say whatever they want, but, but in this clubhouse, we believe. On to bigger and better things in 22, and we got, we got, our, uh, we got our hopes and our, our goals set high. For us, it's, it's to play in October, deep into October, and, and be the la last team standing. And that's the way we put it. Understanding that there's three other great teams in this division, and another one that people don't talk about it that almost put us away last year, right? I, I think we're in an incredibly competitive division. I think it's, it's the best division in sports, uh, let alone baseball. So we know where the bar is. Uh, you know, we were fortunate, proud to be the last team standing from it last year, but everybody's gonna be loading up. We know that, we know how it works in the AL East, and we just gotta make sure we can, we can uh, be in that mix. Even in talking with some of the guys, they like that there's that doubt. There's that lingering doubt with this team, and they're gonna use that as motivation to get through this year. I think we kind of like that underdog feel. Um, it feels like Boston's always kind of had that, that gritty underdog kind of kind of vibe going around. And it's something that we use to push us to thrive, um, to get the extra rep, to get the extra work in. Kind of like having that chip on our shoulder and, and proving everybody wrong. We all were pretty clear that, you know, we, get in, we didn't get the job done. We didn't accomplish our goal last year, which was to win two more games and then win four more. There's no off days for us. You have to try to win every game and try to get better every game. And then we'll look up in September, see where we at, and then we push hard in September and try to make it to the playoffs. Apoya y cuida.